Hey guys, Jennifer Miner here, and today I'm sharing with you a project I'm calling Take Two Tags. I created two similar looking cards, nearly identical, one using Distress Ink and one using Distress Oxide Ink. So I'm making these both at the same time, side by side. So you can hear I've started with some tags that I cut out of just plain white cardstock using my uh, Silhouette Cameo. And I'm applying gesso with a scraper here, just kind of leaving areas where I don't apply any ink, kind of some raised edges, and then set that aside to dry. Now I missed taping this very first part, but I inked both cards with fossilized amber and spiced marmalade. And then I'm coming back in and adding Salty Ocean, Broken China, and Peacock Feathers. Here I'll be starting with the Distress Ink card. And for the duration of the video, I keep all of the Distress Ink card and supplies on my left. And the tag on my right is the Oxide card. So just taking a little bit to build up my colors. I think there was a little bit of green still left on my ink blending tool for that first one, but. So now I'm starting on the Salty Ocean card, or the Salty Ocean ink, and then Broken China, and then last will be the Peacock Feathers. And this was the first time I've ever done ink blending on top of gesso, but I definitely liked the texture that it gave me as I was working with it. Now you can see those two cards side by side. Spritz a little bit of water on both of them and the gesso, uh, sometimes it leaves a little bit when you do the ink splot of color behind, but because it was the gesso, it really went to the stark bright white. And then I'm going to add a little bit of distressing with Vintage Photo and Walnut Stain. And starting again with the Distress Ink card tag here on the left. And then Walnut Stain, keeping that more to the edges so that the sootiness on it is kind of gradual. Then I am using a Tim Holtz tool there just to kind of distress up the edges. And again, since my base card was so light, I'm coming back over that with a little bit of Walnut Stain, just to kind of knock that color down and make it a little more vintage looking. And then I'm again just going to repeat that process with the Oxide card. And one of the things that I really noticed when working with these two products, although at this point especially they don't look that different, they really have a different feel um, as you're inking with them. I feel like the oxides get a lot of coverage uh, much more quickly and you can kind of feel a viscousness to the ink. And there again with the distressing tool right around the edges. And a little bit of the walnut stain just to make that not quite so bright. And next, I'm going to head and stamp some backgrounds on these cards. I'll be using the Tim Holtz Ledger script and just using my Misty to ink those. And that first one was the oxide ink, and now this will be the distress ink. A little bit of vintage photo. And then I decided to come back and just stamp a little bit of this grunge element. Again, from another Tim Holtz set. <laughs> you saw there, I was going to ink it with vintage, but then decided to do the peacock feathers. So my first stamp tag, cleaned it off so I'm not getting any transfer, and then stamped again on the side. You can't really see it in the video, but it did just add a little bit more depth. And now I'm going to uh, stencil onto both cards. I'm using some washi tape there 
And then this is called Gothic. This is another Tim Holtz product. And I'll be using the Finnebear Rust set as well as the Patina. So on the first card, uh, I am just laying down that red co color first using a spatula type tool. And then the darker brown. And then I knew that I was going to mix a bit and I wanted to make sure that I didn't pick up any of that reddish color and put it back into the darker brown pot. So I just set a little bit on my craft mat there so I can work with it. Again, a little bit of red, kind of a burnt sienna color there. And then also a little bit of the yellow. And just kind of mixing. I've taken a little bit of the yellow with that burnt sienna color, mixing it. Then I repeated that same process on the other card, but it was exactly the same, so I didn't feel like you needed to see it. So now I'm gonna, once this was dry, I'm going to add just a little bit of the patina. Again, this is the Finnebear uh, patina set, so I'm just getting a little bit of the two uh, blue and green paste and then a little bit of that copper color. And so these, I'm just going to do this with my finger, and I'm just kind of rubbing it over my previous stencil area just to kind of hit the top and give it a little more visual interest. Up close, this is fantastic. I love both of these products, or both of these um, kits. All right, and here you can see the post stencil on the Distress Ink card, a little up close there, and then on the Oxide card. I was a little heavy handed with my paste, so they went under my stencil a bit, but I think that it still has a neat look. And now I'm going to move on to, I added a branch and some floral dyes to this card. So that is from the Small Tattered Florals from Tim Holtz. It's a thinlets dye produced by Sizzix. And I'm just inking the branch here that was cut out of white cardstock. I started there with the vintage photo and then add a little bit of detail with the walnut stain. And this is a great set. I love these little flowers. So I'm just going to ink. I made three flowers, one with antique linen, one with the worn lipstick, and then one with the fossilized amber. But I'm just going to walk you through doing the antique linen, but the others were exactly the same. So just add a little bit of color to these flower centers. And for this, I am using the smaller ink blending tool, the little circle, which works great for these small, tiny cut die cuts. And then I'm going to also color up the leaves with a little bit of peeled paint. And again, we're still on the Distress Oxide car tag. All right, and then to shape these, I'm using my McGill Punch tool set, the flower blossoms. So just softening up, cupping those petals on the mat using a variety of sizes of stylus. And a teeny tiny one on those teeny tiny little flowers. And then I'm just going to use my tweezers and a little bit, my favorite craft tool, a toothpick. <laughs> so just put a little dab off camera there of glue on my craft mat. And then I'm just going to pick up what I need with my toothpick. For things this small, this is for me, I have to do it this way just for a little bit of control. Ink in the center. And then once this dries, you can use your tweezers to come back in and kind of shape that if you want to make it more full or the petals stand up a little bit more or curl them back. I really just like the way it looked this way. So once I glued, I really didn't do too much finagling with this shape with tweezers, which I normally do. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the petals. So just, it's called cupping there. And then I'm going to use my detail sheet. This is again from McGill and then the very smallest stylus. And I'm just adding leaf veining on the back. 
And now we're going to move over to the heart. And I am adding a layer of color with warm lipstick, wilted violet, and then picked raspberry. And again, still working with this stress oxide. And this particular heart shape is one I cut out with my Silhouette Cameo. And I kind of keep a box of if I've cut out some extra shapes that I didn't use. So these I use two of the same heart that I happen to have in that box. But you can, if you've got a die cut, cut out a heart. And then here I am doing the distressing. Again, with those same colors, worn lipstick, wilted violet, and picked raspberry. And just coming in with the wilted violet. I don't normally put purple on my hearts if I'm going with the pink, but I really, I liked the way this turned out and it was kind of something different for me with the purple and the pink. Building that all up. And so there you can see the two hearts. You'll notice I am really trying to keep my craft mat clean this time. And I'm going to ink right on my hearts. For this, I'm using the Distress Damask stamp set, again from Tim Holtz. My Misty, I pulled out that extra layer um, in the Misty since these uh, are the red rubber foam back stamps because I don't need that extra layer in there. And I'm just stamping with the picked raspberry onto the heart. And this is the oxide heart. And then I'm going to repeat the process with the plain distress ink and the picked raspberry. I really like stamping with the Misty, especially when I'm using distress inks. Just the opportunity to get a second shot at it if it doesn't ink up perfect the first time. So just came back and added a little extra of the picked raspberry around the edges on both of our hearts. And then I decided to add a little additional distress around with the vintage photo walnut stain, my normal kind of antiquing look. And then I also, um, you'll see here in a moment, I stamped with Industrial, which is an Andy Skinner stamp set from Stampendous. Just to add a little more depth, you can see it there. Let me use the vintage photo for that. And it was a little intense, so it just kind of came right back and kind of tried to soften that up with a little paper towel. And then repeat the process on the other heart with the oxide. And then adding the antiquing around the edge. And there I've got my two hearts finished. And then I'm gonna add some Rock Candy Distress Glitter. And I'm actually gonna use Mod Podge. I only had uh, Glossy on hand, but since I'm covering it with uh, glitter, it didn't really matter. Normally I would have used matte. So just put a little bit of Mod Podge on, pour my glitter over, repeat the process on the other heart. Now, I don't always mind 
glitter shedding, but I know for some people it's a problem. So what I decided to do is kind of what I call my trapped glitter for these, which we'll show in just a moment. I've got all three sets of the flowers. So again, you can see on the left there is the Distress Ink, and the right is the Oxide. So those first were the Worn Lipstick, Antique Linen, and then Fossilized Amber. And then we're going to move on. Once my Mod Podge has dried, I decided that I was going to add some embossing powder over the top. And full disclosure, I actually did two coats of just plain clear embossing powder and was really not happy with how they looked. So um, on top of those two layers, I did kind of one and a half of the ultra thick embossing enamel. And you do want to be careful if you're doing what I'm doing here in the video because that does conduct a lot of heat. So the ultra thick embossing enamel, enamel holds heat longer than your normal embossing powder and it's very easy to get that a uh, little too hot on your fingers. So what, you, what I did here was when the um, enamel was still hot, I went ahead and re-dipped it into the um, powder that I had on my scratch paper there. So just put a layer of Versamark ink to hold that first layer. And when you're working with the multiple layers, it's nice because you can come in from the backside and kind of get that started. Again, really careful with your fingers. This gets very hot. So just picked it up and filled in a little bit with kind of almost a half of a coat of embossing enamel. And then I've added my branches by just applying my adhesive. Again, the left is the Distress Ink, the right is the Oxide. I'll actually show you my process here again. So my little puddle of glue, my toothpick on the back of my branch. And then it can be a challenge to adhere um, a small shape to and um, with the ultra thick embossing powder or even just regular embossing powder. So what I do, once I put that shape on there, then I set it, in this case I'm using a stamping block. And here I'm gonna do the same thing. And then I set, I have a gallon of um, Elmer's glue that I set right on top and just let it dry that way. And then just adding my flowers. Pet, or, yeah, petals and then leaves. Stop. Don't stop. And then repeating the process on my oxide card. Then you see that super fancy toothpick tool again. <laughs> And now that I've got the flowers on, I'm going to go ahead and add a sentiment. So I'm using a stamp set called Saying Stuff from Tim Holtz. And I just have kind of a scrap piece of white cardstock here. And then I'm going to use the Memento in Tuxedo Black. And just stamp. I wasn't happy with a couple of these, so I just stamped a couple of them until I had two that I really liked. And then this set is neat since it's got the printing on the back. It's so easy to get all of this lined up. I just did kind of a sample on that one I knew I wasn't going to use to make sure everything was how I wanted it. And just stamped those. And then I'm going to cut them out. A little fussy cut around. And this is a really easy shape to cut out, just since straight lines. And so that's pretty quick. And then once I've got these cut out, I'm gonna add a little bit of the antique linen onto these so they're not so bright white. This is the antique linen in the Distress Oxide. 
and then a little bit of the vintage photo. And I prefer the antique linen to the old paper because I feel like the old paper sort of has a little bit of a greenish tint to it. And if that's not what I'm looking for, I usually use the antique linen. And so then I'm gonna repeat that process in the Distress Ink. The antique linen and then vintage photo. And now I'm just going to assemble everything. So I'm using just a foam pop dot there in the center of my sentiment and attach that to the cards. I've kind of tucked it under the flower. And then I'm going to add two white enamel brads at the stop, just use, at the top using my hole punch there. Repeat that process on the other card. And then just a set of three rhinestones on the lower side there in what I think are con coordinating colors for the tags, kind of an amber and then sort of a tealy peacock and then a light blue at the bottom. And then my last step on these was to add just a little bit of kind of frayed ribbon and that is it. So this is the Distress Ink card. And then this is the Oxide Ink card. And you can see the colors are a little bit more muted versus the Distress Ink one that we're looking at here. And that is our take, my take on take two cards, one with the Distress Ink and one with the Oxide. These were really fun and we know there's not a huge difference between the two, but there's definitely some subtle differences. Again, if, when you're working with them, they feel really different. So thank you as always for joining us and there's more tutorials and videos on my website at jenniferminer.com. Thanks guys and have a great week.